Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Morning, children. This is... I won this coffee mug. I love this coffee mug. This is my second favorite coffee mug. My first favorite is the one I got in Wall, South Dakota, because it has cowboys on it. Cappy old just... Old Cappy just woke up. What is it? It's 110. I didn't just wake up. But it's, anyway, <clears throat> I keep getting a common question when I get common questions. I know I should probably put together a video for it. And this is why are bond prices inversely uh, related to interest rates. And this is very confusing because one, economics teachers and professors and finance professors don't do a good job explaining this to normal people. And uh, two, it's counterintuitive. It, it doesn't make a lot of sense. And, but, but bonds and fixed income investments do have an effect on pretty much everybody's investment portfolios or retirement portfolios. So I'm going to explain it to you because once you once you understand, be like, oh, and then and then the mystery will be solved, and people will throw a parade in my honor, and I'll just be sitting there with my cup doing elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist. So here's the deal. <clears throat> and don't don't puke all over the example. Just let's keep it simple. All right. Don't I don't want you people emailing me in the in the comments like technicality. Well, you see, an inflationary bond. You got a bond. <clears throat> Let us say this bond pays 5% out until whenever, okay? Um, and if the market rate is also 5%, everything is fine because the interest rate that your bond pays is the same thing that the market is paying right now, okay? So to the prospective buyer of your bond, you own the bond, you're getting 5%. Uh, someone's going to look at that and say, well, uh, I could get 5% buying the bond from him, or I could get 5% going into the market and buying a bond from somebody else or a new bond that issues at 5%. Now, let us say interest rates go up to 7%. Okay, now, your bond still pays 5%. Nothing has changed in your bond. So from, from the commonsensical standpoint, you say, well, wait, why, why is my bond worth less? It still pays the exact 5%. Yes, but now it is an issue of opportunity cost. You see, your bond pays less than the market, so it's not as valuable. So now as a prospective buyer, <clears throat> I come in and I say, okay, am I going to buy your lousy 5% paying bond? Or am I going to go, for the same amount of money, get a 7% paying bond? I'm going to go into the market and get a 7% paying bond. Right. Now, the way that you could sell your bond, or the only way you could sell your bond, is you have to make it as attractive and as, as high paying as the market. So you got to lower your price, and they have formulas for this. You lower your price to the point that it effectively provides the exact same rate of return as 7% or matches the market. Okay. So not only does it pay 5% in interest, but you're going to discount its price to get that extra 2% to match the market. Now it can be reversed as well. You pay five, you got a bond that pays that 5%. The market rates go down to 3 Well, now your bond is much more attractive. And here you got to kind of think counterintuitively. Someone comes in and, and says, well, I, I want to buy your bond. Are you going to sell it to them at the same price that you, you had it before? No, because what are you going to do with that money? You got to go and invest it in the market. You say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I just sold you my bond that pays 5% and you only gave me money that I paid for it originally. Now I got to go reinvest it at three. I just lost money. So what you're going to do is you're going to increase your price of your bond. And again, they have formulas for this. So that you get that extra money that will give you 3% plus an effective 2% rate of return on added price uh, when you sold it. And so that's that's it. That's why stocks, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not stocks. That's why bond prices and interest rates are inversely related. And, and quite seesawedly so. I mean, to a mathematical precision, it's not kind of like, well, interest rate, yeah. <clears throat> no, it is quite a, a, a not quite, 100% a mathematical calculation. I watched some... Some finance geek is going, well, technically this one, I'm just saying. So that's it. That's why your bond prices are inversely related to interest rates. And I uh, hope we all learned a little bit of something about bonds. You could go to my websites, captaincapitalism.blogspot.com. 
my podcast called The Clary Podcast. It's Aaron Dash Clary. Just search it. Don't bother typing in the URL. And then, oh, go to my consultancy division, assholeconsulting.com. That's all we got. Toodles.